the main view, we will get into all the nitty gritty rules uh, and go through everything that you should be starting to understand. Then, we're going to have the post view, where once again, we're going to go through everything really, really quickly, but a little bit more in depth. And if you don't understand, whoops, uh, hold all of your questions until the end. We're going to go through everything. Things, some of your questions will get answered as we go. So, um, also, this is long. Bear with us. We want to get you playing as fast as possible. And with that said, we're moving on to the preview. So, this game is like what you played in elementary school. It's catch the flag. That's the basics of everything that we're doing. There are two teams. First, we have the red team.
Um, and please, at the end of the game, come back here so we can start the next game as soon as possible. Bring all stuff. Um, uh, the winner of the game is determined by who has the most flags. If the, if the number of flags is equal on both teams, we'll use points as a tiebreaker. Keep in mind, this is slightly different than past years. Um, now we move on to some useful terms that are going to be used in the rest of the rules presentation. We're going to define them for you here. First, we have concealable. Potions are the only concealable items. You can conceal them anywhere on your person. Um, <laughs> please do not try and conceal anything else, including wands, belts, flags, or well, I don't know why you would try, but glyphs. <laughs> Next, we have cooldown. In this game, cooldown is always one minute. It means that certain items have cooldown, and once you use once you activate them, you may not activate them again for another minute. Uh, next we have C, otherwise known as field of view. This is everything with your feet planted, with your head not rotating, that you can see out of your eyes. Uh, in contrast to that, we have line of sight, which is everything you can see as you rotate in a 360 degree circle. Both of these will come up when describing items. Finally, for this side, we have stun, which is uh, either ten, one minute or ten seconds, depending on the item. The stun starts once your knees, both knees, or your butt is completely on the ground. You may start counting your stun out, and then you get up and you're unstunned after one minute. Um, yeah, oh, important note, once you are stunned, you may not be re-stunned while you are stunned. There's no stun stacking, no stun adding. Next, we move on to sacrificial items. Red items are sacrificial. They are only usable in enemy territory. You must drop them on use. Remember, drop it like it's hot. Um, once, they, once they're used and then dropped, uh, you may not move, pick up, or touch them while you are in enemy territory. And, there, and therefore, conversely, you may only pick them up in your own territory. Um, second to last, we have keywords and phrases. Uh, many items have keyword or phrase that is used to activate them. Uh, you may only say a keyword or phrase with intent of activating an item. Uh, the activation of the item occurs at the end of the keyword or phrase. Um, and the activation phrase must be said entirely in the territory the, where the item is intended to be used. Um, and finally, we have rule zero. Don't be a jackass. Next we have flags. Uh, you want these. These are what win you the game. Um, so first, each team is out to collect the other team's flags. Um, the team with the most flags will win, as I said before, if we uh, if we need to, it will come down to a tiebreaker via points that are assigned to each individual flag. Uh, there are certain restrictions on placements. Don't worry, the judge will tell you where you want to place a flag is not okay place. Keep in mind, judges place flags. You tell the judge where to place the flags, but the judges place the flags. Um, these restrictions include, you may not place them above six feet in the air. You may not place them, you, you must place them such that they are visible from most angles. You must place them such that they are retrievable in one swift motion and you must place them in a room or hallway with at least two exits. While you are carrying a flag, it dispels all items you are carrying, including concealed items, uh, while you are carrying for the flag and for one minute after you have dropped the flag. <coughs> during placement, you are not allowed to place a flag within 10 feet of a glyph. However, if during the game a flag is dropped within 10 feet of a glyph, it dispels the glyph while the flag is there. Uh, yes. Uh, and now moving on to capture. Capturing. There are lots of people playing this game who you don't like, and you want to capture them. Uh, capture somebody, uh, just touch them, and we're not protected by state, local, or federal laws. <laughs> uh, when you capture somebody, they have to drop all the flags they're holding. Right where they are. Just drop them, don't throw them, drop them like it's hot. Uh, then the captor um, can ask to take any items that the captive has that the captor has explicit knowledge of. This means any non-concealable items that they can see, like wands or belts or flags. Um, and this also means concealable items like potions that they know the captive has, that they know the specific color of the potion, and the captive hasn't had a chance to get rid of it. Uh, after, after that, you take the captive directly to jail. Do not pass go, do not collect your dollars. Uh, until you reach the jail, and until the captive touches the jail book, then the captor is on the captive. But once you drop off your captive, uh, you can then resume playing the game. If the captor is ever stunned or captured while they have a captive, the captive goes free. The jail. Uh, 
the captive joins the jail and becomes a prisoner by touching the glyph of jail. Uh, the jail is uh, on the sixth floor of Ween and the uh, eighth floor of Doherty. Uh, um, no, Doherty is not on eighth floor. Yeah. Eight. <laughs> eight. 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 To join the jail, you touch the glyph, uh, and then you must be always touching the glyph or in a chain that's touching the glyph while you're in jail. Every 15 minutes, there's a jail break, and all of the prisoners in the jail get free backs. When you get free backs, you become ethereal, which you denote with jazz hands. You have to use jazz, jazz hands to denote your ethereal. And you get free backs all the way to your home territory. Once you reach your home territory, you stop being ethereal, and you're free to play the game again. You can also be free if a teammate comes to jail and touches you. Uh, you can only free prisoners who are uh, not at the end of the chain, or who are at the end of the chain, who would not break the chain if they left. Uh, when that happens, both players get free backs back to their home territory. They become ethereal until they get there. At each jail, there's a fedora. Uh, if a player is wearing the fedora, they are the jailer. Uh, the jailer is not necessary for functioning jail. But if there's a jailer there, they can re relax the chain requirement. Uh, and they also have a pinky full of mostly magical truth serum. Uh, with this pinky, they can interrogate prisoners. To interrogate a prisoner, you touch them with your pinky with truth serum. And then you get to ask six yes or no questions. The prisoner, six. The prisoner can lie at most once. Uh, if the prisoner honestly doesn't know an answer to a question, they can say, I don't know, and it doesn't count as one of the six. After the uh, the jailer is done interrogating a prisoner, the prisoner gets, becomes free, gets free backs back to their home territory. Now we have stuff. This is the really cool part. Uh, we have wands, we have belts, we have potions, we have red stuff, green stuff, and blue stuff. We have the red wand of vengeance. We have Andy Warhol's belt of pop occultism. We have the potion of poop from a ninja. We have the green wand of stun. We have Goomba's belt of humiliating protection. And we have the potion of key. Uh, uh, wait, there's a key at the bottom of this. We have the blue wand of dispel. We have Doc Ock's belt of many arms. And we have the, the potion of mind control. And above all, don't, don't be a jackass. We have three kinds of stuff. We have wands. You can whap somebody gently and say the keyword. Uh, and the wand is activated at the end of the keyword. There are belts. There's one person per belt and one belt per person. There must be one to be used. Uh, and we have potions, uh, which are used in a variety of ways, but they're concealable. They can't be used while they're concealed, though. And we have glyphs, which only affect the other team. Okay. Moving on to the first type of stuff! Wand! We're starting out with the Wand of Vengeance. It is red, it is sacrificial, its keyword is toast. This, allow this wand allows you to capture an enemy in their own territory. Once you Hit a person with a, with a wand of vengeance and say toast. You are both, you drop the wand like it's hot because it's sacrificial. And then you both are ethereal all the way back to your territory, at which point you become the captor and they become the captive and you take them to jail. Um, this wand is, of course, yet again, for the third time, sacrificial. Drop it like it's hot. Um, there next is the green wand of stun. Uh, it is green, its keyword is stun. Uh, it has a one minute cooldown. Um, that means that for one minute after you activate it, you may not use it again. Uh, next, uh, or sorry, not next. Sp uh, finally, about the Wand of Stun, it stuns the player for one minute. So you whack the player with the Wand of Stun, they sit down and they start counting out their one minute. Finally, we have the Wand of Dispel. It is blue. It, is, it has the keyword Dispel. It also has a cooldown of one minute. Uh, this one can be used to dispel a glyph or all pe or all magical items on a person. Uh, for the purposes of glyphs, if you are affected by a glyph, stunning, dispelling the glyph does not retroactively unaffect you. And now we're on to belts. Now we have belts. First we have the red belt, Andy's belt, uh, Andy Warhol's belt of pop occultism. Slide. Uh, it's red. Uh, to use it, you shout, Leroy Jenkins! This year's alternate key phrase is, I am Groot! <laughs> <laughs> Once the key phrase completes, all enemies within line of sight, that's all the way around, are stunned for one minute and have to sit down. This item is red, it's sacrificial. 
Uh, so when you use it, you take it off, you drop it on the ground, you drop it like it's hot. And remember, it must be activated in the territory you're trying to use it. So, Leroy Jenkins. Not okay. okay. Not okay. All right. Leroy Jenkins. Good. Good. Next, we have Goomba's Belt of Humility Protection. This belt is green. Uh, while you are skipping and singing Yankee Doodle, you are immune from capture and sun. You are not immune from dispel. It's okay to not skip if you feel it's unsafe for, for safety reasons. Uh, uh, this belt can be shared with your teammates. While one person is wearing it, they can link ours with others, and the whole chain is immune from capture and sun. But if any person in the chain is dispelled, then the whole chain is dispelled. Uh, this item does not work in elevators. Uh, so we have Doc Ock's belt of many arms. This belt is blue. While you are holding it, or while you are wearing it, you can have up to four captives, but they must all be within arm's reach at all times. Uh, so like, uh, uh, when you capture somebody, you still have to go directly to jail, but if there's somebody within arm's reach, you can grab them on the way. Uh, if, the, if you're dispelled while wearing the belt, then all of your, captive, all of your captives go free except the first. Next up, we have potions. We have our first potion. It's a red potion. That means it's sacrificial. It's even better because the activation for this is poof, I'm a ninja, and you throw it on the ground. <laughs> so don't remember to, for, to drop it. Um, so what this does is you can only use it when you are a captive. So when you are a captive, you yell poof, I'm a ninja, throw it on the ground, and it stuns all enemy players within line of sight, which means it stuns your captor and you go free. Um, they are only stunned for 10 seconds. This is different from the normal one minute stun. And again, drop it like it's hot. Moving on, we have the potion of, wait, there's a key at the bottom of this. This potion is green, and yes, it does have a cooldown after you've used it. So the way you use this is you take it and you bump yourself on the head, and you say one of three key phrases, key, molt, or jew. And what this does is it changes your state from a prisoner to a normal player, so this can free you from jail or you change yourself from, half, from being stunned to a normal player again. Um, so you can use this and then you can't use it for another minute. Moving on, we have our last potion, which is the potion of mind control. This is a blue potion and is used only by capped forms. So what the captor does is that they uh, hand it to their captive and they say, obey. The captive is now under the control of the mind control potion. The captor, uh, now a normal player, is stunned for 10 seconds and must sit down. So, what happens now is the captive is dragged to jail by the potion of mind control. It is highly encouraged that you act it out as you're heading back. <laughs> um, things to note is you must go directly to jail. You cannot pass go. You cannot collect $200. If you don't know where you're going, please act, ask your captive um, to tell you where to go. Um, and, moving on to glyphs. Okay, so the last piece of stuff we have are glyphs. First, we're starting off with the glyph of jail. It's very simple. It is the jail. Uh, you must touch it on your way in. Um, and these are located on wing 6 and Doherty A, the far ends of each building. Um, this glyph cannot be dispelled under any circumstances. Don't be a jackass. Next up is the glyph of entrenchment, also known as the glyph of gotcha. Uh, when you see this glyph, you are stunned for one minute. Um, you know, sit down, start counting out. Uh, this glyph is affected only if you see it. That is, it, it is in your field of view. Uh, moving on, we now have the glyph of alarm. Alarm! 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 alarm. alarm. Okay, so for one minute after you see this glyph, you must yell alarm or otherwise be loud. Uh, keep in mind, as part of being loud, you may not say the activation phrase of any other item. Uh, this is, so it is one minute, or until you enter a neutral space, or until you are captured. Um, any of those, whichever comes first. And yet again, this glyph is only when you see it, but it is in your field of view. Um, oh, important note about this glyph, we've mentioned this before. Uh, if you get affected by this clip and then it gets dispelled, you are not unaffected. You must continue being loud for your full one minute or capture or neutral territory. Yada, yada. Yada. Yeah. Um, finally, we have the clip of disgusting doorknob. Uh, when this clip is placed on a door, uh, the enemy team 
may not open or hold open doors from the side of the glyph. Uh, this glyph can also be placed next to elevator call buttons. Please, next to the elevator, not on the elevator, elevator door under any circumstances. Um, uh, an important note, uh, if this glyph is placed on a set of doors, the entire set of doors is affected. This glyph may not be used to trap a person in a room, which essentially means you may not place this glyph in a such that, you, you may only place this glyph such that there is another legal exit out of the room or hallway. Um, this glyph cannot be placed on surfaces outside of any buildings, and this glyph is not affected just by seeing it. It is always in effect. You cannot turn away and it doesn't, and like pretend that it doesn't exist. Um, now we're on to the post game. After the game, there will be a game after that, and we need the stuff back to play. So bring all of the stuff back here after every game. If you saw a potion on the ground, pick it up and bring it here. If you place the flag, check to see if it's still there and bring it here. If you place the glyph, it's probably still there. Get it and bring it here. And a note from Ian. Oh, sportsmanship. Uh, don't block people. Uh, this is a safety thing. Like, this is a fun game. It's not a physical game. Don't mess up with elevators. People get stuck in elevators sometimes. That's bad. Uh, don't use fake stuff. This is the only real KGB officially sanctioned stuff. And don't harm the stuff because we use it year to year. Uh, and don't lie about things that matter, like whether or not you're playing the game, whether or not you're in jail, uh, whether or not the game is over. Um, and above all, rule zero, don't be a jackass! Now a note from EMS, if you're hurt, get help immediately. Uh, the phone number for EMS is on the cheat sheets we gave you. Um, uh, uh, you can also go to the judges room, which is me, 8427. We're here to help. If you get hurt, get help immediately. Don't wait until 4 in the morning. Okay. Um, that is all of the rules. I hope you understand. It's okay if you don't, because I'm going to do them again. So, we're moving on to the post view. We have nine different types of stuff. We have red stuff, which is sacrificial, so that means you... Good job. Good job. All right. We have the Wand of Vengeance. This is a Tohosa Wand. You can use it to capture enemy players while you're in their territory. There is Andy Warhol's Belt of Occultism. This is a red belt. It's sacrificial, and you drop it like it's hot after yelling the key phrase. Uh, then there's the Poof of a Ninja. You use this while you're a captive. You say Poof of a Ninja, and then your capture is stunned. We have the green stuff. Uh, we have the Wand of Stun. This stuns a player for one minute. It has a one minute cooldown. We have the green Goomba's Belt of Humiliating Protection. This is you link arms, you sing, and you are immune from capture and stun. We have the potion of weight with a key at the bottom of this. This is used to change your state from prisoner to normal player, or from stun to normal player. Um, we have the blue stuff. We have the Wand of Dispel, which means that you can dispel a glyph or a person. Uh, we have Doc Ock's Belt of Many Arms, which means that you can have up to four captives. And we have the Potion of Mind Control, which means you go straight back to jail. So you remember, the jails are on the Doherty A level, all the way near the front of the building, and the Ween 6 level, all the way in that back corner. Um, well, we have Glyphs. We have the Glyph of Entrancement, which when you see it, um, you are stunned for one minute. We have the Glyph of Jail, which is denounced where the jail is. We have the Glyph of Disgusting Doorknob, which means as an enemy player, you cannot walk through the door in that direction. We have the Jailer. The Jailer wears a fedora and has truth serum. They may ask you six questions, uh, six yes or no questions. You may lie once if you don't know. Truthfully state that you don't know, and it does not count to your six questions. Reminders. Flags dispel stuff. Also a reminder is that once you get a flag, you want to take it to the judge's room, which is at 8427. Uh, the judge's room is in neutral territory, and you can get to it by going all the way up the stairs in the middle. Um, when you, uh, again, sacrificial items are that, that, sacrificial, um, all times, all times in this game, except for two, or one minute. The two different times of the stun from the Poof of a Ninja, which is ten seconds, and the stun from using the Obey Potion, which is ten seconds. Again, our most important rule is... Don't be a jackass! So, we have one more thing that we want to tell you before this game starts, and that is our shameless plug. We are the KGB. Uh, we do many things like this. We have, this is our biggest event, but we also have meetings every Monday. If you want to come hang out with us, 
Yes. Red Martin Morrison at 430. Um, also, we run events every single Friday night. We run events like Trivia Night um, and Arts and Crafts Night. We have other events like Improv Night or Video Game Night. If you want to get spam from us, we have sign-up sheets in the back and some in the front here. Um, yeah, that's all. I hope you understand. So, moving on, we have questions. So, what I want you to do is raise your hand. Our judges are going to come up and you're going to tell the judge the question. Then, they're going to come up and tell me or some of the other presenters and we will answer questions. Okay, uh, quick note, two things that we honestly missed that are also very important. Uh, well, we covered one at the end, we just want to make sure you're clear. Flags, return them. So once you capture a flag, bring them back to the judges room, mean 84, 27. Secondly, one big important thing that we missed is stuff does not work in neutral territory. Cannot use it in neutral territory. Period. Yeah, that's it. I'm a blue 
throw a wizard, David. <laughs> I did get an excuse to run up the steps in this room.